I am back. I am back with a brand new video and this one is going to be all about taking your digital models, digital architectural models and making physical models out of them and what kind of preparation work needs to be done. So this one is going to be quite a niche video and I'm going to show a workflow just for this particular model and of course the workflows might differ quite drastically depending on what kind of form you have and what kind of material you're working with and so on. But one rule that I will have for making this is no CNC milling, no laser cutting and no 3D printing, right? No digital manufacturing or fabrication techniques. Everything should be done by hand. I just want to prove to myself and also to you that it is possible to make physical models of a little bit more complex geometries without actually just you you know slapping a 3d printed <laughs> um, logo on it right so where do we begin well we begin by deciding what kind of a model what kind of physical model is it going to be so in my case I want to make a framework. I want this to become this kind of a, you know, the ship hull. Wait, I, I do have a picture here. Just a second, there we go. This kind of a ship hull type of a framework where you have uh, beams going in X direction, let's say, and in Y direction, or in this case, U and V directions, right? Um, so these kind of cross uh, bracing, I guess, beams uh, would make up the 99% of the structure. And I'm debating myself if I should uh, cover them or if I should keep them, you know, opened up in the model. So we'll need to generate those beams first. Um, then I want my model this model uh, to be like a sectional model, you know, where, where you can kind of push the two, two parts of it apart so that you can see inside. Um, and I want to do it, maybe this is uh, pushing it too far, but I want to make it into a robot. So when it's not me who's going to push the two parts apart, um, but it's actually going to be a motor, right? So you all you need to do is push a button or, or use an app or some something and the model will open up. We'll try doing that a little bit later. First things first, I need to tackle this form and I need to figure out how the hell am I going to create a structure for this form. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably uh, select it and this is my sub D geometry right it's not even a poly surface yet so that's the first thing that I do is I convert it into a poly surface uh, to nerves enter and just delete and put objects uh, no I, I want to keep the, 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 the sub D just in case if I'm gonna mess up right so just because I'm going to do quite a bit of Boolean uh, operations and trimming and so on with this geometry, I don't want it to be, um, I don't want to work with sub D anymore, right? So now it's converted. Let me hide the sub D version. And here we have our polysurface version, right? So if I go to my top view here, I can start um figuring out where am i going to have this kind of a wait uh this kind of a opening up right of the two parts this is like the the, the building from the top it's kind of a sliding motion where where two parts of the building are opening up. I'm looking at the feedback of, of my camera. <laughs> that's that's why I'm not looking directly into the camera. Also, it would be awkward, right? This kind of eye contact between me and you. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I need to figure out that line, that this particular line here. Uh, let's go back here. Oops, that made made a boo boo. Should be okay. 
Um, so my thoughts are perhaps this kind of a cut right here should do the trick, right? So that if, if we cut it here, let's actually take a look. Like that. If we cut it here, we will see the opening right here, like th this opening, as well as the top here. I can even show you with a clipping plane. What am I doing? I'll I'll just make it. I'll just show you where where the section is with the clipping plane. That's gonna be even faster. There we go. This kind of a cut line. I think that's gonna work, right? So, so we need to separate our geometry into those two parts, right? It needs to become separated. And the way you do it is just pretty straightforward. All you need to do is just, you already have drawn the, the curve, right? So you just extrude it, <clears throat> extrude it once, the lid, take the surface, extrude the surface up to make a box, and then since this is um, a poly surface, a closed poly surface, I can do boolean, dif uh, sorry, boolean split. Boolean split with this box. I said with this box, enter, there we go. It's a little bit of a, uh, the geometry is a bit on the heavy side, so it's going to take a, a little while, but eventually I will have two parts, right? Two parts to work with. Um, the reason why I'm doing it right now is because I think it's such a prominent, such an important cut, right? That I need to get it right. I need to get it right. Uh, and I need to, all of my steps, all of my kind of detailing steps, or whatever you call it, preparation steps, I guess, should follow this line here. So now I have, you know, this, this separated, and this is going to, oh yeah, the way I showed it with, the, with my hands, I can now show you in the 3D model. Just, it just moves to the side, like that slides open and then you can see both sections here so there's gonna be a rail system or something like that i have no idea how that's gonna work but we will figure it out uh, probably something to do with arduino anyway coming back to our ship idea and the idea that we need these ribs right I'm thinking that we will need to separate these parts into even smaller bits and pieces, right? Uh, just so that, let me show you in the top view, just so that the ribs that will go, let's say, along this direction like that, here, are gonna be very easy to make right? Because it's literally a, a set of sections. But then once they reach um, this area right here, which I'm showing with the mouse, it becomes a little bit more complicated, right? So what I want to do is I want to separate these parts, right? I want to separate them out according to the direction in which I assume the ribs will be, right? So everything gets separated. And it's gonna be done in 3D, so it's going to be a little bit more complex, but the principle of it is going to be absolutely the same as what I've showed you with, the, uh, with this little line here. So just so that we don't waste time, I'm gonna skip ahead, and I'm gonna show you the split version. And there it is. Let me just kind of move these guys apart so that you can see which parts we're going to be dealing with. So this is one, this is the other, and this is like wing A, let's say, right? Part A. Then we have the middle section, which is going to be at an awkward angle. 
and then we have the final one here so it's only four four parts i really thought that i'm i'll need more than four but it seems like according to the directions of the sections it seems like we will we will manage with four so let me undo that real fast and basically we're going to just um work with this just this single um element here or, or part of the building here and we will figure out everything with it once we've figured it out we will apply the same procedure here i'll probably use grasshopper to automate it but for now actually for now let's just isolate this and let's see so let's talk about the principle right the principle is quite quite simple i take this right i contour it i contour it from here to here every i don't know that's a hundred millimeters so every 10 centimeters why is it like so is it already scaled did i scale it i already forgot if i scaled it or not sorry that's me not preparing properly i'll just create a bounding box to see what's the size of my geometry distance 500 millimeters okay so it's half a meter it's already scaled i forgot that yeah sorry about that i forgot that before all of this i've already scaled down the geometry to be at one to one scale to what kind of model i'm gonna have uh, if you haven't done that do so <laughs> quite important to work at one to one scale of your physical model rather than your building okay so back to here isolate now i know the contours the the contour gap at least right um contour this enter from here and just keep in mind that the directionality is very important right so hold down the shift key or f8 hit f8 button so that you have this orthographic snap turned on uh, so and your contours will align with one of the X Y or Z directions Like that and distance between contours. I'll do like one centimeter. So 10 millimeters Something like that Okay, great. So we get our contours right here and let me Actually, I'm just going to move them out Just so that you can see better. Usually I would just lock uh, lock the shape in place right and I wouldn't move out the contours but in this case I'm, I'm moving them out just to show you right so what we end up with is these outlines right and we can literally just take these outlines and do planner SRF planner surface on these outlines and thus we get our surfaces right and then we can select those surfaces, extrude them by 0.5, I guess, like half a millimeter, or let's do one millimeter, extrude them by one millimeter, and just select them all again, and move them back by minus, minus 0.5, so that they are kind of extruded to one side, and then recentered so so we move them back by half of the extrusion right and we have our rib cage and then all we would need to do is just um contour it in another direction right and we would start kind of fiddling with it and creating this kind of almost a waffle structure so that's the principle uh the principle will need to be implemented through grasshopper and i'm going to do that by myself to save time and once i'm i've done that i will show you and explain everything that there is to explain about the grasshopper script there's it's not going to be fancy so it's not going to be a tutorial in itself it's just going to take <laughs> take a little bit of time so let us skip ahead bam <sighs> 
Okay, that that took longer than I than I anticipated. So where do I begin? I guess let let's start from the left, right? So we have these layers BR1A and it's the red one and BR1B that's the blue one. The red one are these lines, the blue one are these surfaces. That's my approach, which gives me most control. Don't worry, I'll explain why. So we reference the... In this case, I'm going to talk about BR1A, which is the red lines, right? We, we extract all of the geometry from that layer with this really handy tool that's in Lunchbox plugin. Um, so, right? really really handy tool um, we basically get all of our geometry from it uh, we we extrude these curves up so that they're, they're basically there are surfaces that are intersecting our building we move them down by half of the extrusion so that they are definitely intersecting the building <laughs> same thing and we're basically just um, taking our shape, which is our B-Rep, and creating B-Rep, B-Rep intersection between these two. So that's literally just making contours, right? Making sections. Uh, so we have that. And if I move uh, these curves around, let's say I move this one, right? And I reset. I don't need to re-reference anything. It's going to automatically recalculate uh, everything for me, right? Which it, which is nice. So I'll undo that, reset again, and uh, continue showing uh, showing the process. Uh, come on, there we go. So we have our BRIP BRIP intersections. From them, I'm using. Polygon offset, this one, which I'm offsetting outwards. I don't remember why. I don't remember why I did this. It should offset inwards. What do you mean? Never mind, I'm stupid. It offsets outwards and inwards, right? Did this tool by 10 centimeters. So I actually, I only take the curves that are offset, uh, that are being offset inwards uh yeah that's that's the plan let me actually disable this so that you can see better so from all of these uh intersections i'm only taking the curves that are offset being offset inwards right so i have my boundary surfaces right like so all of these these guys and i have my curves these guys and i take the, the, the starting point of these curves, actually it doesn't matter which point, and with surface cl uh, closest point to a surface tool, I basically calculate if um, these curves are on the surface or are they outside of the surface. So think of it this way. It's either this curve right here or this floaty boy right here. So the floaty boy will give a number that is not zero, right, in a surface closest point, because it's, you know, it's away from any surface that there is. While this guy right here will give a number that is zero, right? So in doing so, I can basically say all of the floaty boys should be deleted, right? So I sort, list item, check for the smaller, and cull, trim, merge, blah, blah, blah. And I end up, shit, accidentally clicked a wrong button. Minimize that. Sorry about that one. And basically, by the end of it, I get hollowed out ribs, right? So, so it, it gets hollowed out. Why did I need to go through all of this uh, pain? Well, uh, that's quite an easy answer. If I didn't um, cull 
the floaty boys, they would also generate uh, surfaces for me. And I don't want that. I only want um, the holes to be registered, right? So that's why. Okay, so we have uh, we have the ribs here, and it's basically uh, let, let's put a pin in there and come back all the way to here, to here, and let's look at the surfaces that are being referenced right here, the blue layer, right? So this is the blue layer. It comes in, it gets intersected, like the the, the blue surfaces get intersected with the ribs right here so you will see bam you will see these curves appear right and these curves get uh, literally lofted together no, no, nothing too fancy they, they just get lofted right so we get something like this and then 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 there's a little bit of offsetting going on where we offset inwards and you can see it's a little bit messy here don't worry about that but it's basically we just offset the the, the curves inwards into the surface we actually are offsetting outwards and inwards and all of this portion is just checking for whether or not it's outwards or inwards and just getting the ones that are inwards and lofting those. So what we end up with are these strips. These broken, messed up strips that I didn't notice before I started recording. Anyway, we ignore that. We ignore that and we continue. So those strips will uh, just simply get extruded and moved. Um, and they will become sticks. Right, and I can specify the extrusion width here, right? So this is like one millimeter thick, thick boys. And I'll just color them in a beautiful, beautiful brownish color. <laughs> anyway, so now we have sticks that are intersecting with our beautiful, um, beautiful ribs here. What do we do? Well, well. We just uh, create a bira bira intersection between these. We do a little bit of a plane math and we create rectangles basically here and here. And those rectangles are just going to split our surfaces and according to the area we will just get the, the ones that have the largest area. That's easy, right? So we have the cutouts, and actually let me show you like that. We have the cutouts, huh? that's easy. And now those cutouts, uh, we also extrude and move them, that's, that's pretty straightforward. And we get our ribs right here, which are two millimeters thick. In terms of thickness, yeah. uh, I still need to choose what kind of thickness I'm going to be using. So I assume we will do... Uh, video number or part two of, of this where I'm going to be choosing the thickness and you know kind of nailing everything uh, everything down and then ordering the material but it's going to be balsa wood so I think uh, we will be using something around 1.2 millimeters up to 2 millimeter thickness sheets of balsa wood so we have we have this and now all I need to do is is just straight up repeat the same process for, for everything, right? Also, why is this not showing up? Hello, rendered, there we go. So I need to create much more um, blue surfaces, right? Oh yeah, and I guess I can just show you real quickly. Uh, show selected. I'll just grab this one, this guy right here, and just show you how how that works. So I'm just going to kind of take the surface, copy it to the side, move it down, rotate it so that it aligns with whatever I want it to align. Push it in here. Make sure that the intersections are not, you know, completely non nonsensical. 
maybe a little bit more like that yeah something like this and then all i need to do is hit that reset button and i'll get one more ribbon come on i will get one more ribbon there we go so that's that's pretty straightforward pretty pretty easy right um i just need to create a crap ton of those right and and then basically control them some parts of it are not that nice but i honestly don't care i will fix that in the physical model all i need is the you know kind of the main body to to, to start working with it so now what i'm going to do again to not waste time i'm gonna do all of the blue you know surfaces and i'll i'll, I'll kind of using that script i will create the overall skeleton of the building and for you you won't need to wait that long because it's going to be finished in one second Whew. there we go there we go this is half done i stopped because i will do the rest of off camera uh, i just want to show you the result and get done with this <laughs> with this first part right so here we have a structure uh, made out of two parts you can see the seam between them right here and this is exactly you know that seam is going to be present in my physical model as well i will be assembling this model out of four parts that i showed you before um and we of course have all of the incisions and and whatnot already ready so the next step is going to be laying out these sheets or these uh, beams these sections onto a flat you know flat ground uh, printing out a 2d drawing of them somehow transferring them to balsa wood and then you start cutting right so i'm going to show all of that of course uh, both in videos and live streams so it, it is going to be a little bit of a bigger project uh, but before we do all of that we will need to figure out you know the, the the motion system and how how can we make you know these parts i have no idea if i've selected this yes i have how can we make these parts kind of slide out and, and and so on and work my graphics card is just not having a good time right now um so there's going to be a lot of work in the base um of of, of this model that's going to be in part two if you would like to get this definition i will not please i will not be explaining this definition and how how it works i the even for my patreon supporters this is a very very rough definition but if you want it it is going to be available just like any other definition that i do uh, for my patreon supporters so check out that link in the video description as well other than that we are done with part one i want to eat i'll see you next time later <laughs>